what, what would we do without him? My God. <laughs> anyway, um, when I, I really felt like the Lord really wanted me to um, to elaborate on, on her word that she gave us, and she, um, you know, gave us the word about prayer, which is up there, and. and it says here, I've called you and Peter to be awakeners. Now, she was releasing that word in the church, but we're all called to be awakeners, okay? So even though she's saying it to me and Peter, this is for all of us. The Lord says that New Jersey will be one of those states that will be one of those states most mobilized to pray and stand. And I'm calling you to sound the alarm to mobilize an army to go forth. That's the word. And so Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us because he wants us and that's, that's my portion. The Holy Spirit, you know, of intercession and prayer, he's our teacher. And he's wanting us to go beyond our limitations. And, um, you know, so one of the things that I really felt impressed that the Lord was saying to, to just really reiterate about us being a priesthood before the Lord. We're all called to minister to God, right? But God has called us all to be powerhouses for him. And I have to kick it up a notch, as you do. We all do. Because... That's what he's asking us to do in this hour. He's saying, wake up. We all have to wake up. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what could be hindering us from being the awakeners, being the, the, the militant army. The Lord spoke to me in J July and said, I want you to raise up and mobilize an, a, a prayer army, militant prayer army. Well, what does that look like? I'm like, Lord, <laughs> that's nice to hear that, but what does that mean to me? You know, and so God is, first of all, we all have to individually catch the vision. And then others in other churches, you know, I know God's speaking to other churches. I'm not the only one he's speaking to. But we're the remnant that God has called to make the change. We're the ecclesia. And, and that means we're called out ones. We're called to legislate and make a difference in our region, in our cities, in our families, in our lives, in, this, in, our, in our state, in our country, for heaven's sakes. So, um, in Revelations 1, 6, in the Amplified, it says, and formed us, God has formed us into a kingdom as his subjects, priests to his God and Father, and to him be the glory and the power and the majesty and dominion forever and ever. And so, but it also says, I, I should have put, I think it was in verse 5, that we're kings and priests. See, we, we minister unto the Lord first, but we're priests, kings, where we legislate and we have dominion, we have rule and we'll have authority, and you'll see that. And so then in, in 1 Peter 2, 5, and I know you're aware of all this, but it's good to rehearse it. It says, come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. So we have to build ourselves into this for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. See, that's, that, it's a training ground. We've all gone from faith to faith. We're all developing our, our spiritual muscles and our prayer power. But um, he, he's, he's challenging us today to go beyond, all right? In 1 Peter 2.9, it says, but we are a chosen race. We're chosen. He's calling us a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people, that we may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I shared last week, or I don't know when I shared, I shared a while ago, when that there's a Nigerian um, man by the name of James Kawala, K-A-W-L-A-Y-A, -A -A, something like that. And he spoke about the power of prayer. But before I do that, could Renee and Ron just stand up, and we're going to just put our hands out towards them. They have a mission. They're going on a mission to, I believe, in Alabama to minister to a group of, of um business people. So, Lord, we just bless them. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for the wisdom. We thank you for uh, your unction that's upon their lives. We thank you for words of knowledge. We thank you, Father, for the evangelistic anointing upon them. Father, as they go to meet with these business people in Alabama, and, Father, that they will speak a word in season, we ask that you already prepare those people's hearts. We say, let there be revival in that business meeting. Holy Spirit, let your oil flow. And we decree signs, wonders, and miracles, Father. And we set a bloodline around them that your angels go before them in our rear guard in in Jesus' name, amen, and we bless them, amen. So 
God has called us all to pray, but in 1 Samuel 12, 23, it says, As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Prayerlessness is a sin, and it's a, it's a sin even against our own spiritual life, right? And how do we develop a close walk with Jesus if we don't pray? We, we don't know, like, we're, you know, it's, it's a disadvantage if we're not praying, we're not hearing his voice, we're not feeling his comfort, we're not experiencing the peace of God. If we're not praying, we're not experiencing his joy. We're not experiencing breakthrough. See, prayer is for all of us. And I know I've heard a lot of people say, well, God, I, you know, I don't hear God's voice. If you're his sheep, he says, my sheep hear my voice. We all hear his voice. But we just have to fine tune it. And what we have to do is develop that time and take time with him. The beauty of God is, is that he simplifies everything. And, you know, yes, it's good to learn about prayer. It's good to study about prayer. It's good to research. It's easy. We have the Internet. But if you just call out to him and say, Lord, teach me. God, give me. You have to know the word, though. Because you need to know what's right and what's wrong. You need to know. Because remember, the devil comes as an angel of light. All right. So in Hebrews 4.16, in the Amplified, it says, Therefore, let us with privilege. I love this. With privilege. Approach the throne room of grace, that is the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence. We go before that throne with confidence, knowing that God's listening, right? And without fear, so that we will receive mercies, hallelujah, for our failures, hallelujah, and find his amazing grace to help us in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just and at the right time. We can go before that throne room of grace because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross for us. All right? So, oh, so let me get back to this guy, James. For those of you who haven't heard it, James uh, was a warlock, top warlock in Nigeria, and, and he was dedicated at his birth to, you know, work in the, in the realms of darkness. And so... Um, when Mara Cerullo, who was, he, this guy passed away, and by the way, grew up in Patterson, just saying, and he went to a, um, an orphanage in, in Clifton. Um, he, this guy was amazing. If you can read any of his stuff, it's so good. I, I just love the, 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 the anointing on his life comes through even in his literature. But he came to Kampala and to minister and, and this guy said that all he had to tell all the witches and warlocks that they had to leave that region in a 70-mile sphere, he said, because of the power of God on Morris's life. Well, we're no different than Morris. Yeah, that's prayer power. And they couldn't go back into the region for 21 days because of the power of prayer. All right? So why do you think the enemy hinders most of us with praying? Because it knows it. He knows that we kick, and I'm sorry for this, I grew up in city, we kick his sorry butt in plain English. That's what happens in prayer, all right? So, Kathy Platt, I don't know if you remember, you gave me a book by, um, what's his name, Wesley Duell, whatever, and Revival Fires, right? And his quote in his book says, victory depends on the warrior spirit. You cannot be God's person with anything less than the militant spirit of prayer. We are called to be the militant ones. God says that, you know, we are to fight the good fight of faith. You say, yeah, but Jesus, he's a lover. Yeah, he's a lover, but he's a warrior. And when you love, you speak the truth in love. Because we want to see the things that are upside down turn right side up, right? 